Um, in the context of my work, and at the level of specific country situations, I, I have come to the conclusion that prevention of genocide uh, is predicated on acting comprehensively and as early as possible in four interrelated areas. One is the protection of civilians, and that by protection we sometimes have to mean deployment of international forces, both military and police forces. Second, establishing accountability for violations of human rights and humanitarian law. Um, and in that sense, at least now we have instruments like the International Criminal Court that can give us a realistic chance of establishing accountability. Third, humanitarian <coughs> relief and access by the victims to economic, social, and cultural rights uh, is very important, not only to protect people because uh, it, it does offer a measure of protection, but also to revert the effects of the crimes that have already been committed against these people because they are vulnerable in many different ways and not only vulnerable to physical attack, but also to conditions of life designed to uh, uh, create their extinction or demise. And the fourth uh, area is uh, we need to take steps to uh, settle the underlying causes of conflict through peace and other agreements. These measures, these four areas of measures uh, that I mentioned offer some answers as to the what uh, on the what needs to be done. But the how is also of crucial importance. In addressing situations at risk degenerating into genocide, we must make sure that we maintain a clear message on the responsibilities of states to protect their people. In dealing with situations of conflict, we must be able to see through the morass of details and complexities and recognize the patterns of violence against civilians. At the same time, we must develop agile tools to respond to challenges, avoiding facile solutions that may worsen or intensify situations of conflict. Uh, honorable members of parliament and colleagues, in, in these efforts, the United Nations has had a steadfast friend in Canada. From my perspective as special advisor, I have always found support in Ottawa. At an operational level, Canada has been a key contributor to the UN's conflict prevention capabilities and to peacekeeping. At the normative level, the International Community on, uh, Commission I'm sorry, on Intervention and State Sovereignty, established by the Government of Canada, has played a pivotal role in helping to broaden international understanding of sovereignty in a way that should help prevent genocide and crimes against humanity, an obligation that no country can really uh, uh, avoid. Uh, but it will be uh, necessary to recognize also that the emerging norm of the responsibility to protect, as proposed by Canada and as uh, adopted in the summit uh, statement of 2005 by unanimity, uh, has given my office and the efforts that we are embarked in uh, a, a, a new set of uh, legitimacy uh, that, uh, that creates a, a, a normative basis for the kind of efforts that we are trying to, to embark upon that has become an, uh, an enormous boost. Uh, translating the normative, uh, the emerging norms of responsibility to protect into operational uh, actions is part of what my job at the United Nations is. Uh, much more remains to be done in this sense, and it is my hope that the United Nations will be able to continue to count on Canada's leadership in our common efforts to prevent genocide. Um, at this point, when we are changing from one Secretary General to another, uh, it's very important that we look at, our, uh, at the mechanisms that have been put in place, at the experiment that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, and come up with uh, ideas for strengthening this, uh, <coughs> this uh, mechanism. Uh, in that sense, uh, the other uh, body that has been created in the last few years is the Advisory Committee on the Prevention of Genocide uh, that includes several very distinguished uh, members, but very notably Senator Romeo Dallaire among its members. And uh, that, that uh, committee has met twice this year and has produced uh, an excellent blueprint for how to strengthen the cap capacities of the United Nations to prevent genocide in the future. And the, the, the ideas are particularly <coughs> strong because, in my mind, they, rise, they arise from a careful, rigorous, 
assessment of the experiment, uh, the experience of the two, two and a half years in which I've had the privilege, uh, but also the very frustrating experience of trying to deal with very thorn, this very thorny, very difficult issue on how do we prevent genocide in our lifetime. I have many other things to say, but, uh, but I'm hoping after the panel speaks that there'll be an exchange and I can add them later. Thank you very much. Thank you.